What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today, got another top five video for you guys. We've already showed off the top five gaming keyboards of 2021, top five gaming mice, top five headsets. Today, top five gaming and streaming microphones for you. The best of the best that came out this year. Now for all of them, by the way, they are all USB and plug and play, which means no software required. Some of them use it, but we'll go over those as well. None of them require software to be used. That also means no XLR and no extra audio interface needed as well. Plug and play mics for you guys. They all have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well. So if you want, you can plug in your headphones directly into the mic, hear yourself real time, as well as your PC audio. And for each of these, we're gonna do obviously an in-depth sound test. That's the most important part. You wanna hear how these microphones sound, right? So make sure you got headphones on so you can hear all the clarity. We'll do a feature rundown, talk about the build, all that stuff. I'll have them all listed for you in the description down below so you can check them out. Let's head back to the PC, do the mic tests. Okay, so first up today is gonna to be the Epos B20. And this is also the most expensive one on the list at $200. So just know the prices definitely go down from here as we move our way down to number one. And also, since this is number five, I think quality is also gonna improve as we go along, but who knows? The features in this, it could be the right mic for you. So first things first, you get it out of the box and all set up and it looks really, really nice and sleek and minimal. You have your volume control for your headphones. Like I said before, all five of these microphones have a 3.5 millimeter headphone headphone jack on the bottom. So you have your headphone volume control right on the front and a mic mute button. This is the side you talk into. On the back side, you also have your gain control for controlling the overall volume of your actual microphone and four pickup patterns. So this has four different patterns you could cycle between. And they're gonna be cardioid, bi-directional, omni, and stereo. And right now, I am on the cardioid pickup pattern, which is you know designed to be picking up pretty much everything right here. Uh, best for you know your, your vocals and stuff. You can also note that I have it on its stock stand, which is on the slightly smaller side because I have it propped up here on the box so it is closer to my mouth. Uh, but the microphone is actually attached to this little arm here. The base is what comes apart. So this is gonna be great for putting it on like a secondary boom arm because you still have this arm. You can rotate it to pick up your vocal pattern the best. But again, still kind of on the shorter side, but that's kind of the normal thing with these desktop microphones. Um, so a boom arm I think here would definitely be necessary. Now what we're gonna do for all of these uh, mic tests is do a quick little typing and talking test. So in the background, you can see how it does at eliminating that background noise. Again, great for a gaming and streaming microphone. You wanna see how it does in that emulated setting where you're gonna be typing and stuff. So just real quick, uh, this is a GMK Pro and I have lube tactile switches with their glorious Panda switches. So not sharp and clicky like, you know, blue switches, not, linear and quiet like uh, red switches, but more so in between, which is why I picked them to get to see how they sound. Now, again, this is the cardioid pickup pattern. So I'm gonna swap over now so you could hear how the uh, omnidirectional sounds because they're all sort of scattered on the back. Okay, we are now on the omnidirectional pickup pattern, which should be picking up pretty much everything going on uh, in the near vicinity of this microphone. So it's definitely gonna be a lot louder, and it's going to, again, pick up on a lot of just ambient you know, noise and stuff in your room. PC fans, you can see my PC is right here. Uh, if you have a loud family and they're yelling, you know, it's gonna pick that up because that's what omnidirectional does. Okay, switching again. We are now on bi-directional, which is gonna be picking up everything going on right here and right behind it. So in front of the capsule and directly behind the capsule. Uh, this is gonna be best for like if you're talking to someone in like an interview setting or maybe like a podcast setting if you're you know you're looking at each other. That's what that's gonna be for. But again, this is definitely gonna be picking up a lot of that noise going on directly behind it. Not ideal for gaming and streaming. And then lastly, we have stereo, which the primary focus is picking up towards the left and the right side of the microphone. So it shouldn't sound too, too different from maybe like the cardioid in terms of the background noise. Um, it should be, you know, mostly illuminating that. But also my vocals probably aren't as uh, precise as they were with cardioid because, again, that's the, the best for your vocals. So I'm going to switch back to cardioid real quick and we'll wrap up this quick portion and tell you guys my quick thoughts. Okay, so for the B20, it is a 24-bit, 48,000 hertz sample rate. So that's sort of like your average nowadays. But again, you do have the, all the extra control as well as the four pickup patterns. Now, one thing you probably noticed throughout this, you know, mic test so far is there's a pretty good amount of white noise in the background. You can probably hear that, right? And 
it's not necessarily uh, the biggest deal. If you're going to be using this in, you know, like voiceover work for like post-production, you can very easily edit that out. Uh, but again, it, it is sort of annoying, especially when you use the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and have headphones plugged in. You can still hear that. Um, just to note, I, I don't really do that because I have an amp and DAC where I plug in there. Uh, so I never really monitor my voice real time through the actual microphone. Uh, but yes, the white noise is, I would say it's a problem, uh, but it's also why I have it at number five because ultimately $200 is just too, too pricey, right? Uh, but again, it's built nice. It looks nice. Doesn't really matter. Uh, it sounds good if you can sort of, you know, fine tune it. And depending on what pickup pattern you need, the fact that it has all four is great. And I also do want to point out there's software for this, which again, not necessary, but that gives you a bit more flexibility when it comes to EQing your mic and getting some different uh, just sound quality out of your mic. So I'll show you that real quick. Okay, so now we're inside the Epos Gaming Suite. And again, this is where you could really go in and start to fine tune some of the things. Like we have some vocal enhancers if you want a more warm sound signature. Clear is going to be more crisp on the high end or custom. You can just very much go in and uh, create your own if you like. All good things, but again, not necessary. I like the warmer sound. Here you can easily control gain, control side tone, which is, you know, hearing your own voice real time in your headphones. You have that control here. A noise gate percentage, noise cancellation as well. And I figured this would be more useful in eliminating that sort of, you know, background white noise, but it didn't really do much even at 50%. So kind of interesting that you can also go in through here and change your pickup pattern. You can also go in and put a high pass filter if you like and uh, mute the mic if you'd like. So again, not necessary software, but they do have it. Okay, next up for number four is gonna be the NZXD capsule. I did a full dedicated review on this when it came out, so check the channel if you wanna find out you know, more about it other than just sort of wrap up here. But it's also 70 bucks cheaper than the Epos B20 at 130. Again, with Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales, maybe you can find it for cheaper, hopefully. Uh, but also, it's not as in-depth feature-wise as the Epos B20 was either, because you only have one pickup pattern, which is cardioid. So you can't control all that, and there's just very two simple dials here right on the front with your headphone uh, button on the bottom for, again, monitoring your actual headphone audio, and then the gain dial right up front. So again, when it comes to simplicity, it's very narrowed down, but I kind of like that. It is a more simple looking mic that definitely follows their design language from the other NZXT products they make. Uh, so really big fan of that. Also, this one is on a relatively um, larger stand as well. It's a taller mic, but again, uh, not ideal really for just the desktop scenario here. So that's why I have it elevated on the box again. Uh, could probably also benefit from its own boom arm. Uh, if you do want to take it off this stand and put it on like your own boom arm, there is no washers, no screws needed. There's a simple quick release button on the back. There's a simple there's a simple quick release button on the back, and the whole arm just pretty much pops off the mic. And now you have a little cover you can put on and just pop it on your own boom arm. So a really clean and elegant way of uh, doing that, which I thought was really cool. Now, one of the things that separates this from not only the B20, but every other mic that's going to be on this list is the fact that this is a 24-bit, 96,000 kilohertz sample rate microphone. So the average is either like 16 or 24-bit, but 48,000 kilohertz, this is double that sample rate at 96,000. And again, you can think of that in terms of like uh, the equivalent of being video resolution. Um, yeah, it's going to be, you know, double, and you're getting just a lot more when it comes to post-production, um, more flexibility with your waveforms and editing, uh, more room to push it pretty much. Now, not every program or software right now is even capable of going up to 96,000. So like, you know, Streamlabs, OBS, even like Adobe Premiere is capped at 48,000. Uh, we are in Adobe Audition right now, so we can take advantage of the 96,000 hertz, uh, but keep that in mind. So you're getting more out of it, again, if you wanna push it. Now, in terms of the actual microphone quality, the thing that I can pinpoint this is that it's like, it's very crisp sounding, you know, very sibilant, uh, definitely enhances the treble, I'd say, uh, with their capsule they're using. And it kind of gives you like a, you know, this sort of high area voice that's very sharp to the ears. Again, with post-production, you can definitely edit that, add some more bass to it, but that's my initial sort of, you know, response to hearing how it sounds. And again, doing a typing test with the cardioid pickup pattern to see how it does in terms of eliminating any background noise. 
hopefully this gives you an idea on that. Um, I know from when I reviewed it, when I tested it, definitely pretty good at eliminating uh, what's going on behind the mic and around it. Another thing I will say in terms of design that I don't like is the fact that we have these uh, the buttons on the front. They're very like wobbly and there's no hard stop. So just a minor annoyance to me. Uh, again, one of the things that I don't like as a whole for the price. You have a nice light ring to let you know when it's um, powered and plugged in. When you mute it, that will go red. So visual indicators. It has the, the basic essentials for a gaming and streaming microphone. Again, cardioid, always the way to go. Not bad overall for 130 now, number three on our list is going to be a very interesting one, especially for the gamer and streamer out there. This is the $99 Rocket Torch, which has its own sort of mixer panel built into the mic. Um, $99, bucks, but I've definitely seen it on sale uh, for as low as $75 bucks very frequently, which I think is a very, very good price. Now, just in terms of design, you know, very gamer looking. You've got the RGB. Very massive logo there right in the middle. Uh, but again, that onboard mixer is definitely pretty cool. So we'll talk about that in a minute. This is a 24-bit, 48,000 kilohertz sample rate. So again, on par with your standard microphone out there. Uh, and there are actually three different pickup patterns here. Right now, we are currently on the cardioid one. So we'll talk about that right now. On the bottom of the mixer itself, you have a pattern control, a volume control, and a gain dial. Or slider, not dial. You know what I mean. The pattern dial is for cycling between those three patterns, obviously, with the rightmost setting being the off button if you just want to quickly turn it off. The volume dial in the middle, again, is not for your microphone volume, but for your headphones if you have it plugged in and you are uh, monitoring your audio there. And then the gain dial is what controls the overall volume of your mic. So when I turn it down... You couldn't hear me, but I said I can do that real time. And you'll also note, as I turn up the gain, it reflects on the uh, the microphone because it has these built-in RGB strips on each side in addition to the RGB uh, Rockat logo there. Now, if I want to mute the mic, I can also do so by, pre by pressing the volume dial, the center one. You'll see the lights go off and that goes red. And there's also a pretty interesting feature up top with this uh, touch, not, not, not even touch sensitive, but a gesture sensitive strip where if you wave your hand over it, it's another way to mute the mic. So real quick, I'll show you that. Again, you can see just by waving my hand over it, everything goes red and uh, that means it's muted. Pretty cool. Don't know how useful that would be, you know, in the heat of the moment, if you need to just like mute your mic real quick. I feel like just pressing the button would be a lot simpler. Uh, but yes, a cool built-in feature nonetheless. And also for the RGB lighting, you can just turn it off completely. If you want, there is software for RGB and a button on the back which controls brightness. And last thing before we move on, uh, on the bottom side here, there's a little screen which just tells you when you're live or when you're recording, it'll just say live. And when your mic is muted, that screen will also have a little uh, mute mic logo. So again, just some cool, you know, integrations here. Now we've been doing cardioid this whole time. So as I've been saying, we're going to do that now, pick up up some of the, uh, the background typing noise. You let me know how you think it is. I've heard it um, definitely on the, you know, I would say a little bit louder side for the background noise, uh, but still pretty good altogether. Next up is going to be stereo mode for again, the left and right channel specifically uh, good for like ASMR and stuff, or if you're putting this microphone in between you and a buddy while you're streaming, anything like that. And then the rightmost setting, let me turn the gain down a bit. This is called a uh, whisper mode, which is for when you need to be quiet. You know, it's late in the night. You don't want to wake up your family or your parents. You put this on whisper mode and it enhances uh, very much, pretty much the, the gain overall. So this would be good for like this. If you're just talking real chill, you don't want to be super, super loud, but you want it to still pick up your voice. Uh, yeah, you get the idea. You get the idea. Now, one of the things I'll say about this is you can probably tell you can use this if you'd like without the actual bass. If you want to put this on a boom arm, you can. 
However, as you've noticed, there's two cables in the back. One is connecting the actual microphone to the base itself, and the other cable is connecting the base to your PC. So there are two cables to get this fully powered, which means if you want to put the mic on a boom arm, you still have to have a cable running separately to the base and then the base still to your PC. So keep that in mind. Uh, you're going to need a long enough cable then to connect both, especially if you're keeping this, you know, like a, a bit away from your overall uh, you know, vicinity because the cable they include to connect the base station to the actual mic is like, I don't know, six inches long, very, very short. And another thing which kind of has me uh, scratching my head a bit is even though these are USB-C mics, you know, there's the two USB plugs uh, for this microphone, they're they're kind of like a proprietary USB-C where all these slots and ports have these little plastic rails on the side and then on the cables there's a cutout for those rails so it has a nice snug fit which is I guess you know so it doesn't come out over time but again uh, with the fact that you can use these separately, you're going to need to use possibly your own cables if you want to, like I said, put these uh, on diff different parts of your desktop. The fact that USB-C is the most, you know, uh, universal cable out there and they're sort of making it pro proprietary is annoying. I tested about five different cables. It worked with like two out of the five. So you need to have a really, really thin USB-C connector to, uh, you know, be able to use this if you're not using their own USB-C cables, which I think is just a very weird quirk. Again, with the most universal cable out there, USB-C. Uh, so, yes, altogether, for 99 bucks, not too bad. For $75, very, very good. If you need something with all these extra bells and whistles like this in the most gamer sense that doesn't have, I think, the, the best uh, microphone quality out there. But definitely still good, definitely still usable. Uh, but, yeah, so for 75 bucks, not bad at all. Okay, coming at number two for me is going to be a budget option from company Fifine. I'm sure you've heard of them before. They make great budget microphones, and this no exception at number two. It's the Fifine K658 RGB, which is usually 100 bucks. I mean, I'm 120 but again, I've seen it on sale very frequently down to $100. And I think this mic sounds super, super good. And as you can see, uh, builds and visuals wise, there's a lot going on. So you do want to speak directly into the top of the microphone, not, you know, on the side or on the back side, like you would see on other mics. This is designed to be talked directly into the top of the capsule. That way you have a quick and easy um, volume adjustment right here, which is not for your headphone audio, but for the actual gain on the mic. And then embedded into that ring is a touch sensitive mute button, which will shine green when it's not muted and it will shine red then when it is muted. So uh, just in terms of you know what you need out of it, I think those are the two things that are most important. Also, it is a dynamic cardioid mic. Uh, it does have the lesser bit rate at 16-bit versus 24-bit, um, which all the other four are, but it's still 48,000 kilohertz sample rate. Now, another thing you can see built in here is they have this on its own shock mount. You do have like a, a windscreen here, and there is some RGB illuminating the bottom of it, which looks cool. There's no real way to, you know, control the lighting effects and stuff. It's just this sort of rainbow wave. Uh, again, not bad. Some extra flair. But with the way this is, again, designed to be talked into, uh, one of the things about this is it gives you a very small tripod. Um, and again, I have this propped up on a box. I would recommend a boom arm, especially with this. Uh, the tripod here, I just don't think is going to cut it because you want this as close to your mouth as possible. And unless you're going to be doing what I'm doing, propping it up on a box, which is not ideal, you're going to want more of that, you know, verticality. So it's picking up your vocal pattern the best as a cardioid microphone. So again, real nice, quick and easy adjustments. If I want to adjust the gain on the fly, very, very useful. You have the pass through on the bottom, all good stuff. So we'll be typing in the background so you can see how it sounds with the, uh, again, obviously I'm just like cramming buttons right now because I have the box in the way, but tactile switches, how do you think it's doing at eliminating that? And since we're talking to the top of the capsule, this is probably the farthest away uh, that a microphone or the a keyboard would be because what's going on is right here and this is all back behind it. So the ideal situation for a cardioid mic like this talking into the top. And honestly, for 100 bucks, 
I think it sounds very, very good. It's a full sounding mic, uh, maybe a little bit on like the, uh, I said that there's more treble than a deeper bass to the overall sibilance of my voice. But I just, I think it sounds really, really good from again, a budget company like Fifine, a hundred bucks built in shock mount. Uh, maybe you want to spend an extra 20 or 30 bucks on a boom arm. Very, very good windscreen. The essentials here, cardioid gain, mute, you're good to go. Uh, definitely, definitely impressive. And then for the number one spot on our best gimme mic of 2021 is going to be the Razer Siren V2X. And if you're someone who just hates on Razer for no reason, you know, you're a fanboy of another brand and you just hate Razer because you have no friends, listen, get out of here because there's no denying since the start of 2020 and of 2019, their products have improved so much. The microphones on the Black Shark headsets are incredible. Last year's Siren Mini, which was that tiny little $40 capsule of a mic, sound incredible. This, following that up with some pretty good improvements that gamers and streamers will love, which is why not only I think it sounds super, super good for the price of $100, but it's going to make, just make people's lives so much easier I'll show you that in a second. So it is a super cardioid pickup pattern to the mic, 24 bit, 48,000 kilohertz. And again, just to do some uh, typing in the background, you could hear how it is with that uh, background elimination as a cardioid mic or super cardioid as they call it. And again, this just in terms of look and design, very, very similar to last year's Siren Mini. Uh, the difference is now is we do have a gain dial on the front. You can control your, uh, your actual microphone volume, as well as a quick and easy mic mute button. It'll be red when it's muted, shine green when it's not. Now, I do think one of the more uh, limiting features before we get on to the other good stuff about this is this is by far still the smallest mic on this list in terms of size and the stand. It is just very, very still tiny and compact for a microphone. So this you're going to need a boom arm. Again, as I've done so far for everything, I have it propped up on the box and it's still just very, very small. I'm struggling not like leaning in fully, but it's a very small mic. So you're going to need a boom arm. You can slightly adjust it with the like little revolving uh, base to the neck, but yeah. In terms of the actual microphone quality, I think it's just very full and like whole bodied, warm, uh, good bass, and it's just a pleasant sound, very natural. Um, and I think this does the best job in terms of, you know, representing your true tone of your voice. Again, for a hundred bucks. Now, the reason why I'm giving this the number one spot, besides the sound, besides the sound quality, is inside of Synapse, which again, it's not necessary at all. You don't need Synapse to be able to use this mic, but you will be uh, stupid if you don't, because inside, like we saw with the Ogato Wave uh, microphones, with their Wave Link software, you now have a completely virtual mixer. So here, real quick, you can obviously just adjust your headphone audio if you have it plugged in on the bottom, as well as your actual microphone gain. You can change the sampling rate on the fly, as well as put on a uh, an analog gain limiter so you're not like constantly clipping and stuff, which is cool to see. But you go over to the Stream Mixer tab, and now you have four dedicated inputs and outputs for your stream mix, your playback mix, your headphones, and your microphone. And why this is so crucial is because the stream mixer is going to be great for if you're streaming. You can adjust these levels real time uh, depending on what your, your viewers are hearing and what you're hearing. So again, the reason why I always love to see this and why it's most useful is... You know, say you're playing a game, you're streaming, whatever, and you want to listen to a brand new album from your favorite band. Obviously, you can't play that on Twitch or YouTube or wherever because it'll be, you know, a copyright strike. So you can adjust all the levels and you can decide what you hear, the volume you hear it, and also the volume chats hearing it. You can play completely, you can put up, you know, some royalty-free music on YouTube, blast it for them so they can hear it, but you can't. Meanwhile, you're jammed to the new Aesop Rock album and they can't hear it. So a very, very useful feature. You can see the levels real time. It's done right. It's done well. All these mixes can then be tied together. You can choose here in Synapse if you want to enable monitoring. So, you know, if you hear it, you can link the channels together. It's just really good to see. Happy to see it. So again, 
not necessary, but for gamers and streamers out there, that stream mixer in Synapse is going to be a lifesaver. So you're not constantly fiddling around in OBS. The way they have it set up in here is going to make everything so much more simple. And one of the things that we'll say about this for 100 bucks is they actually just make a um, they made a V2 Pro version, which is 150 bucks, and it's the same. It's the same microphone. It's just five millimeters smaller, the capsule, and they do give you a real time um, headphone, you know, headphones dial on here instead of just the gain. But for me personally, I don't think that's really necessary at all because again, you can do it in both Synapse, your PC settings, and the stream mixer. So um, I never find the whole headphone volume dial on a microphone necessary. But also for someone like me. I never ever plug into a microphone because I have my own amp and DAC with my own headphones. So I'm more, you know, plugged into the PC versus headphones. So you're saving 50 bucks without that headphone feature, which I think is still um, just not worth it for the upgraded V2 Pro version when you have this for 100 bucks, which sounds so good. And, you know, one of the things I knocked it for was being so small that you're going to need a stand for. But hey, maybe you don't have a lot of desktop space and you like the more small, very literal, compact microphone where it's not going to be, you know, just in the way of stuff. So could be, could be the best option for you. And again, all things considered, that's why I have this at number one. All right, guys, so that'll wrap it up for the top five gaming and streaming microphones of 2021. Hope you all enjoyed. Like I said before, they'll be all listed for you in the description down below so you can check them out. And really, depending on what you're looking for, what sort of features you need and all that, uh, you can't go wrong with any of these. You have to factor in, what's your use case? What's your budget? And really, I think, you know, these two right here, cream of the crop for the price, Really, really good stuff all around. I hope this video helped you out. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We still have a ton of holiday content coming up real soon. Well, I'm Random Frank P. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.